The Dukes improved to 7-0 and they get their first shutout since 2008, beating the Phoenix of Elon in Elon, North Carolina this past Saturday, 51-0. Hello everyone, I'm Kurt Dudley, the host with JMU head football coach Everett Withers as we talk James Madison University Dukes football. And coach, of course, your background is more on the, uh, the defensive side mm -hmm. and now as the uh, CEO, uh, CEO of this, uh, this program here, to get a shutout this weekend, how important was that for your defense and just kind of rewarding for the defensive side? Well, Kurt, I think it's really important. Uh, uh, anytime you get an opportunity to get a shutout, that's kind of a, uh, an extra victory for your defense and uh, for all the hard work that they put up in. It's really hard nowadays to get shutouts. And uh, for our defense to come up with a shutout, I thought that was really neat. They, you know, our guys did a great job of preparation. Coaches did a great job of, of, of giving a, a game plan to our players and our players executing the game plan. I think we came up with, with three uh, fourth down uh, stops. Uh, so uh, heads off to our staff uh, on defense and, and our players. Uh, Taylor Reynolds had a pretty good ball game. He had yeah. two picks and how he is tied for eighth with a gentleman by the name of Tony Booth, who played a little NFL, right. as well as uh, Upton Jackson, who's an All-of-Famer at James Madison. Uh, he's really played well for you down this down this portion of the season, quite frankly. Yeah, Taylor's really playing well, and, and you know, he started off a little slow for us, but he's picked it up. He was really uh, uh, locked into the ball game, uh, and, and, and you, could, you could tell all week long with his preparation and even going into the early ball game that he was going to play well. Uh, did some really nice things tackling. Uh, but also came up with two really good plays. His first interception was really a, a heads-up interception. He was playing man-to-man -man coverage and actually came off of his man to, to make an interception on another route. Uh, so uh, really heads-up play. You did play a lot of youngsters, and to me that makes it even that much more impressive that you maintain the shutout because a lot of times when you go to that depth, you'll lose a shutout in the fourth quarter, and sure. the Dukes held well there. Sure. We played uh, a couple young guys in the secondary uh, uh, Robert Branch, uh, Michael Cobb played at safety. Um, so we had an opportunity to play some young guys. Demetri Holloway played uh, a good bit at uh, Will Linebacker. Uh, Josh Fleener played a good bit, played I think 30 some odd plays at defensive tackle for us. So uh, we, we played a bunch of young guys. Uh, we knew we were going to have to do that. We're, we're trying to get guys experience. They're in our two deep. And uh, so we want to be able to get them on the field. We do talk so much about offense. Want to continue, though, a little focus on the defense. If you look at the game on Saturday, uh, you gave up only 105 yards rushing right. on 30 plays, uh, the 30 times they carried it. If you can negate that part of the game, you talk about stopping the run. Right. If you do that, you basically cut the game in half yeah. with what a team can do. Well, that, that's what you want to do. You want to try to make every, every opponent one-dimensional. Uh, if a team can throw and, and, and run it uh, and they can mix it, it's really hard to defend. It doesn't matter what you call on defense if they have the capability of doing both. If you can take one away from them, and, and preferably the run, uh, if you can take the run away from them and make them throw the football, then you've got a chance uh, to, to turn your athletes loose up front to pass rush and, uh, and, and get pressure on the quarterback and, uh, and then be able to make some plays on the ball, tackle and, and, and get interceptions and cause fumbles. Let's go to the offensive side. Now, mm -hmm. last week when the Dukes played at, at Towson, it was a very efficient game. Right. Didn't have many explosive plays. Now, some good runs, right. uh, but not really big explosive plays. You got an explosive play right off the bat with Carden Johnson as he races 80 yards for a score on his way to 165 yards. Career high, yeah. he scored a couple of TDs for you. Yeah, Carden had a really good game, was running really hard, had a bunch of yards uh, after contact for us. He was our offensive player of the game and, and uh, did a really nice job for us. Uh, that, that play probably set the tone for our, for our team and uh, definitely for our offense, but uh, I think more so for our team. Uh, but we did, I think we had nine explosive plays this week. Uh, so, that, you know, up from last week where we didn't meet our goal. So, again, anytime we can do that in the run game and, and be able to run the ball as efficiently as we ran it, uh, it's going to be helpful to us going down the stretch. Now, obviously, if you rush the ball well, you've got right. good offensive line play. But from another side of that, Bad had a very efficient day, mm -hmm. 16 of uh, 22, 198 yards, no interceptions right. once again, a couple more touchdowns. He's now two away from tying Justin Riscotti all time with 51 in his right. career. Uh, the O-line gave very good protection on Bad. When it didn't, Bad rolled out of it and made plays. Yeah, he, he made a bunch of plays off schedule, uh, being able to get away from the rush. Our offensive line, again, did a nice job of protecting him. And, and, and again, I go back to when you're able to run the football in the tempo that we're able to run it in, 
it really wears down the defensive line. So when it is time to throw the football, the pass rush uh, intensity probably isn't there quite as much from the defensive lineman. So uh, we're able to protect the passer a little bit better because of, I think, our run game. Uh, but Vad did uh, occasionally with good coverage down the field by Elon, was able to escape and buy some time and find an open guy. It, it didn't seem to me. Now, you, let, you were leading 34 nothing at halftime, and you're controlling the game. You're right. controlling the tempo. Did you ratchet down a little bit tempo-wise? Did you feel like you needed to go up-tempo as much in that game? Well, uh, we felt like in the second half that we wanted to turn up the tempo a little bit more early in the third quarter and just kind of see where the game took us. We didn't really uh, – we had a couple series there in the third quarter. I, I felt like we did not uh, do well. We had some penalties and, and uh, set ourselves back some. But our, our, our whole goal is to come out at the beginning of the third quarter and really try to up the tempo as much as we can. And uh, that's one of the reasons we defer so we can get the ball in the, in the third quarter so we can go really fast. So, again, it's another thing that we can correct and get better at. You don't change that, it seems like. We talked about this last week, right. the scoring difference in the first and the third quarters yeah. against your opponents. So that, that just stays right on course with your right. own rhythm. Start fast in the first, right. start, start fast in the third. Yeah, that's really kind of our mindset is, is play it as two games and uh, start fast early. Uh, the, the, we want the start on defense to be the first, first half start and then the, the offense to be the second half start. And that's kind of how we envision it going. Doesn't go like that all the times, but uh, that's kind of like we, we like it a little bit. A nice story kind of emerging here. Uh, he got a little exposure this week in that Jonathan Klusterman mm -hmm. was more active in the passing game. He yeah. caught a few passes for 22 yards, but he got his first career touchdowns. Yeah. and validates the hard work that this young man, a former walk-on, is doing for you. Yeah, uh, Clue is a, a big part of uh, our offense and our special teams and uh, does a great job. And he's one of the walk-ons that we, after last year, after his play last year, where he played some tight end for us last year and did all the things that we asked him to do, you know, we gave him a scholarship uh, this summer. And uh, he's just each week gotten better and better. We just, we, we're just trying to find more plays for him to get in the game. And, and uh, he had his first touchdown uh, of his career, which was really nice. He did a nice job on the route, uh, did a great job. Ed did a great job of putting the ball where it needed to be. He did a great job of catching it. So uh, congratulations to John. Yeah, he certainly did. And, uh, and we may see a little bit more of him yeah. at the same time that we see Dean Cheatham. Yeah. So there are some you, – you still have some tricks up your sleeve, so to speak, personnel-wise. Well, yeah, it's one of the things we like to do. We like to be able to get in, in two tights in the game some uh, in 12 personnel and get both of them on the field because, one, that can help us in a run game. Two, we feel like Dean and John are really good receivers. Uh, so – to give the illusion that we can run it or throw it out of that personnel group would be beneficial to us going down the stretch. You were very high on signing uh, Trey Sharp yep. last year. He got hurt in the early part of the season, had a scope. Right. Good to see him. His first touch goes yeah. for a long one, although it's also – it's one he'll remember, but maybe not for the right reason. <laughs> well, uh, he, you know, Trey's a, a very talented young man, very explosive back, got great vision, great feet. Uh, we, we signed him, you know, obviously out of Carborough, uh, North Carolina. Uh, so he's close to home. Uh, first touch goes 64 yards or so, uh, but but uh, he stumbles there at the end and uh, doesn't, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't finish the deal off. And, and it was really neat to see the other running backs, uh, uh, you know, really cheer for him. Yeah, you, you got quite a good uh, efficiency, 406 yards of total offense. Right. Uh, excuse me, of rushing right. offense, over right. 600 in total offense. Um, Improvement in the kicking game. Yep. That's something we talked about last week. Yep. How do you feel that you made strides there? I think we made some strides. Again, we're kicking off an awful lot again. Yes. I think we kicked off nine times. Uh, and, again, I think, you know, we continue to kind of tweak what we're doing in our, in our uh, kickoff coverage. But I felt like our guys are – the effort and the, and the, I guess, timing of what we want to get done was better. We still, you know, got a ways to go and want to do better in that. But uh, punt game was good. I thought we downed a couple inside the, uh, inside the 10. Uh, did a good job there, and I felt like we did a good job. We only had one kickoff return, I believe, so I think we did a really good job there. A, a couple of under indicators, I think, that may show other signs of improvement. The number of penalties is starting to mm -hmm. fall a little bit. Obviously, the turnovers have right. tr uh, come down dramatically. Right. Are those signs that things are getting sharper? Well, yeah, I think so. I think more emphasis is on, you know, obviously protecting and, and cherishing the football, which is important for us to do, for us to be successful. Uh, the penalties, obviously, we want to. We, we don't want any, but we know, you know, when you go fast, sometimes you're going to have one or two. Uh, but we'd like to continue to trim that number down for us. All right, coach. Once again, congratulations Thank to you. Dukes, 51 to nothing at Elon, improving to seven and zero in the.
overall record and to 4-0 in the Colonial Athletic Association. When we come back, we'll get a little chalk talk with the assistant coaches of the Dukes after this timeout on the Coach Everett Withers Show. Harrisonburg Nissan's factory authorized year-end clearance sale is going on now. Harrisonburg Nissan has all in stock 2015 Nissans priced at or below factory invoice. And you keep the rebates. 0% financing on Nissan Altima, Rogue, Sentra. All invoices clearly posted. Savings up to and over $8,000. We're clearing out the 15s to make room for the 16s. Now's the best time to buy. Harrisonburg Nissan's factory authorized year-end clearance sale. Going on now. Check us out 24-7. HarrisonburgNissan.com. We buy right so you can too. That's right. At Office Products, we do things right. With our multi-million dollar inventory of new, used, and refurbished furniture, you're sure to find exactly what you're looking for. From desks to chairs, filing cabinets, and so much more. All the major brands that you're looking for. Office Products, we buy right so you can too. Office Products, we do things right. Clear to zip. Break a little. Busters. Good job. Good job. Game on. Welcome to Valley Building Supply of Harrisonburg, formerly known as Valley Blocks. We've combined with the Valley Building Supply chain to offer a wider range of products and services to our customers. Visit our newly remodeled showroom to see the latest from Anderson. We also carry interior and exterior doors in a variety of styles and finishes, and custom hardwood flooring and moldings. We are your Shenandoah Valley Masonry experts. Our expanded inventory now includes more tools and builder's hardware than ever before. Let Valley Building Supply show you how to create the home of your dreams from foundation to finish. Hey JMU Nation, how are you? This is Coach Cesar of your James Madison Dukes defensive coordinator and inside linebackers coach. Uh, this week I want to talk to you a little bit about what teams do uh, against us in, in our man coverage schemes. We've played uh, quite a bit of man coverage this year uh, and what I want to show you is formationally what teams try to do and then also schematically what, play, uh, what teams try to do. Uh, so as you kind of take a look at the screen, Elon uh, pinned us in a man coverage situation and what teams often like to do is condense the formation. What I mean by that is you'll see the receivers have moved in uh, really from both sides and what they're trying to do is they're trying to create pick uh, route opportunities for their offense. Uh, so this is actually the second play of the game. What you'll see is uh, again a condensed formation. Kyrie Hawkins here has the running back so what they're trying to do is isolate him uh, and you'll see the, the wide receiver right here actually physically tries to pick Kyrie uh, but Kyrie does a really nice job of navigating through the traffic and one of the things we tell those guys to do is the more traffic you get the closer to the line of scrimmage you get. So he's got that guy man to man. We do a really nice job across the board. You can see we've got guys covered all across, uh, all across their receivers. The quarterback has to double clutch, which you see here. Good pressure by Alex Mosley, uh, which allows uh, Andrew Anchor to beat his uh, offensive tackle uh, and to ultimately make the sack, which is a really nice play for him. What you also see is Gage Steele on the back end. In the event that Andrew doesn't make the tackle, he's in pursuit of the quarterback. So as we take a look at the back shot, you'll kind of see what Kyrie Hawkins had to see. Again, you see a condensed wide receiver and running back, which is a big tip for pick routes. Uh, so he, he tightens up his split uh, and ultimately is able to navigate the traffic uh, right there. You can see it happen right here, navigate the traffic. Uh, the quarterback has to double clutch, uh, gives us a chance uh, to get a minus yardage play and put him in a third and long early in the game. So, again, as we kind of play more and more man coverage, you'll see teams condense their formations more and more, uh, and we have to kind of negotiate all the, uh, all the pick routes and so forth. So uh, I'll turn this over to Coach Elliott. I look forward to seeing you guys on Saturday in Bridge Force, make, making this a great home uh, environment. And thanks again for all your support down in Elon. Go Dukes. Uh, afternoon, Duke fans. Uh, we're going to talk about Badley's touchdown to John Miller against Elon last Saturday. Uh, we call it a sprint out pass play here. So we're trying to get that on the perimeter really with a, a three-level pass. 
If you stop it right here, you got one, two, three. Trying to really, the integrity of the play was to hit Dean in the flat. Corner ended up jumping Dean. And Vad did a real nice job of reading the corner and throwing the corner route to John. And obviously the great finish by John Miller here uh, by staying in bounds, putting on the brakes, and, and getting a touchdown. You can see it from the end zone as well. All right. So all we're doing right now, a little poor little camera work there, but we're trying to sprint out, move the pocket a little bit, give that on the edge with almost a run pass option, three level pass. You can see the corner squeeze up and the safety's late to replace the squeezing corner and the result is a touchdown. Thank you there Coach Elliott and Coach Cisa for a little chalk talk and a little bit more depth into JMU football. When we come back, we'll go into depth with a field hockey Duke, one of only six in the career of the history of the program to score 50 goals. Taylor West will have that interview after this timeout on the Coach Everett Withers Show. Harrisonburg Nissan's factory authorized year-end clearance sale is going on now. Harrisonburg Nissan has all in stock 2015 Nissans priced at or below factory invoice. And you keep a rebate. 0% financing on Nissan Altima, Rogue, Sentra. All invoices clearly posted. Savings up to and over $8,000. We're clearing out the 15s to make room for the 16s. Now's the best time to buy. Harrisonburg Nissan's factory authorized year-end clearance sale. Going on now. Check us out 24-7. HarrisonburgNissan.com. Welcome to Valley Building Supply of Harrisonburg, formerly known as Valley Blocks. We've combined with the Valley Building Supply chain to offer a wider range of products and services to our customers. Visit our newly remodeled showroom to see the latest from Anderson. We also carry interior and exterior doors in a variety of styles and finishes, and custom hardwood flooring and moldings. We are your Shenandoah Valley Masonry experts. Our expanded inventory now includes more tools and builder's hardware than ever before. Let Valley Building Supply show you how to create the home of your dreams from foundation to finish. Office Products, we buy right so you can do. That's right. At Office Products, we do things right. With our multi-million dollar inventory of new, used, and refurbished furniture, you're sure to find exactly what you're looking for. From desks to chairs, filing cabinets, and so much more. All the major brands that you're looking for. Office Products, we buy right so you can do. Office Products, we do things right. Clear to zip. Break a little. That's good. Very good job. Game on. Hello everyone, I'm Kurt Dudley and welcome here to the JMU Field Hockey Complex. On October the 13th, the Dukes of JMU, number 18 in the country, improved to 11-3 tonight with a win over the Davidson Wildcats. So we're catching up with uh, one of the stars of the JMU Field Hockey program the last number of years, and that is Taylor West from Princess Anne, Maryland. First of all, Princess Anne, Maryland, it's quite a distance, maybe not South Africa, as some of your teammates are from, but Princess Anne, Maryland, out there on the eastern shore, it's uh, kind of off the beaten path. How did you learn about James Madison way out there? Um, I actually came to camp here my sophomore year of high school just by kind of word of mouth with friends. So I was kind of looking at colleges and it was in the radius of uh, distance I wanted to go away from home. So. But you don't come by boat, do you? No, it would actually be quicker. <laughs> <laughs> it probably would yeah. be as you have to circumnavigate the yep. Chesapeake Bay to get here playing field hockey when did you pick up the sport and is it that popular on the eastern shore um i started playing probably when i was like three or four my mom was a high school coach so it's always kind of around the practices there and it's growing on the eastern shore but in comparison to the other regions of the country such as pennsylvania it's a very small sport and the skill level is not as high as it is in those areas like pennsylvania new jersey you certainly are a fun and dynamic player to watch. What is it about your skill set that, that really makes you the good field hockey player that you are, Taylor? Um, I think my uh, elimination skills are just my stick work. I spend a lot of time working on that and just hand-eye coordination and ball control. And okay. All right. That's Well, and your speed is pretty good, too, I, I might add. Now, you're one of the rare people at James Madison just a couple of weeks ago uh, in a game here at home. You scored your 50th career goal and only the sixth player to do so. 
Certainly this is a very storied program with the national championship in 1994. To be among those very few, what does that do for you? Um, just kind of going back, looking through the um, others who are on there, it's, very, it's an honor to be even close to the top. Um, just the players that are back on the 94 championship team, they, the records they set were just incredible. So. And of course, among them is the all-time leader, Carol Tata, who was the Hendrick Broderick Award winner um, when she was here. She scored 116. That's pretty remarkable in only three seasons. Yep, I just wish I was able to see her play some, so that's pretty incredible as well. Let's go back to your freshman year for a moment because you started off with a bang. You scored six goals in three quick games, but then you had an injury, and that uh, that's why you're actually able to play here this year. Yep. Um, I came in, and I was having a little bit of trouble with my shins, so I ended up taking a red shirt, and back then it was hard taking that year off because you're a freshman and you want to come in and play, but now I'm so thankful I took that opportunity. There are a number of athletes that's happened to. Nikki Newman, for example, the basketball team that happened to her, and Precious Hall is in that circumstance now. But now as you look at this, your team's 11-3 and three as, as we do this interview here on this Tuesday evening. Uh, this season, what's this season meant for you since you did have this extra opportunity? Um, I just think it's an extra opportunity for us to grow as a team. We put a lot of hard work in in the off season, and it's just exciting to kind of see the pieces coming together at different times throughout as we progress through the season. I mentioned South Africa, and I do because you have three South African teammates. You have one from Belgium, uh, Lou Steinches, one of the seniors, uh, you know, and you have them from all over the globe. Again, coming from a small town like Princess Anne, Maryland, what's it been like to have all of these international teammates? Um, it's just, it's a lot of fun. They all bring different pieces to our team. Um, you get to learn about different parts of the world and just different everyday life. It's so different than it is here. And there may be a chance for you to go outside of the United States, maybe to play some hockey. You want to continue to play once you're done here because you graduate in December. Yep, um, I'm currently kind of exploring options to try to figure out what would be the best fit, but I would love to continue to play after the season's done, so. Well, we hope this season goes much longer, much deeper. Uh, good luck as you end up the regular season and into the CA tournament. Maybe we have the tournament here. We hope we do in early November and maybe on to the NCAAs. Taylor, thank you very much. Thanks for having me, thank you. All right, that's Taylor West of the JMU Field Hockey Dukes. Harrisonburg Nissan has all in stock 2015 Nissans priced at or below factory invoice. And you keep the rebates. 0% financing on Nissan Altima, Rogue, Sentra. All invoices clearly posted. Savings up to and over $8,000. We're clearing out the 15s to make room for the 16s. Now's the best time to buy. Harrisonburg Nissan's factory authorized year-end clearance sale. Going on now. Check us out 24-7. HarrisonburgNissan.com. Welcome to Valley Building Supply of Harrisonburg, formerly known as Valley Blocks. We've combined with the Valley Building Supply chain to offer a wider range of products and services to our customers. Visit our newly remodeled showroom to see the latest from Anderson. We also carry interior and exterior doors in a variety of styles and finishes, and custom hardwood flooring and moldings. We are your Shenandoah Valley masonry experts. Our expanded inventory now includes more tools and builder's hardware than ever before. Let Valley Building Supply show you how to create the home of your dreams from foundation to finish. Office Products, we buy right so you can too. That's right. At Office Products, we do things right. With our multi-million dollar inventory of new, used, and refurbished furniture, you're sure to find exactly what you're looking for. From desks to chairs, filing cabinets, and so much more. All the major brands that you're looking for. Office Products, we buy right so you can too. Office Products, we do things right. Clear to zip. Break a little. Busters. Good job. Good job. Game on.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Coach Everett Withers Show. The next opponent comes up for the Dukes of James Madison. It is a rivalry game. And, Coach, uh, this is a team that has uh, considerably good offense, ranking only second only to your offense. They do it pretty good on the ground as well as in the air. And we were talking earlier, you need to make them one-dimensional because they do have an effective offense. Yeah, they do. They've got two really good running backs uh, that run the ball well. Uh, the offensive scheme is very, very uh, uh, good. They use a lot of different personnel groups. They can run the zone. They can run the power. Uh, they do a great job. Quarterback does a nice job off a of play-action pass. Uh, talented, skilled guys at the wide receiver position, really good tight ends, a number of good tight ends. So uh, challenge is there for our defense because uh, this offense can't put up points. Yeah, Brian Brown, one of those receivers, uh, 6'1", 198, leads the CA in yards per game at 99. Uh, 18.3 yards per catch, and then Reggie Diggs, 6'4", 200, big target out right. of Surrey County High School, 32 receptions, 75 yards per game. You mentioned the scheme. Are they getting the ball down the field a lot, or are these guys really good with yards after the catch? Well, I think both. I think both of these guys can catch the ball and turn a five-yard gain into a you know a 25-yard gain. Uh, but they are you know getting some one-on-one -on -one matchups because they're running the ball so well. Uh, when anytime you can run the ball well, you start getting guys creeping up closer to the line of scrimmage and more man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. When you do that, they are able to max protect off their play action and, and hit deep over routes and deep one-on-one -on -one routes. So these guys are good with the ball deep down the field, and they're good catching the short ones and turning them into big games. As you stop the run, you've talked about fitting the gap defensively mm -hmm. and or you know fitting the run, of course. And Gage Steele actually talked to that earlier this week uh, at your press conference on Monday at O'Neill's. Uh, are they coming downhill a lot? Is this a side to side? What's their offensive approach from the running game? They, they do a little bit of both. They have a downhill run game in their gap scheme, their power run game, and then they are able to run some inside and outside zone where they're looking to, to, to either take it downhill, bounce it front side, or cut it all the way back. And both backs are very talented running backs that uh, have a good uh, uh, eye for where to cut it back to and when to cut it back, depending on your, your front and your, uh, your linebacker play. So uh, they, they're very skilled in what they do. I think they do a really good job of it. And the play action pass game off of that makes it really difficult. Also, when your defense is a plus nine in turnovers, that right. helps your offense out quite a bit. What are you seeing from them defensively? Well, I, th I think they do what they do. Uh, they don't they, they don't hurt themselves. Uh, they're not real complicated. They're going to kind of squeeze the gaps and funnel the ball outside. Uh, they're going to try to hang leverage on, on every uh, offensive formation that you have and then try not to give up big plays and then try to strip and knock the ball loose and intercept the ball. Tempo, big for you this weekend? Huge, huge, huge uh, game for us to, uh, to get into tempo and, uh, and keep our offense going. All right, the Dukes and the Richmond Spiders coming up. Ridgeforce Stadium homecoming 2015 and ESPN's game day will be there. And we're not quite sure at the time of this taping where on campus, but certainly somewhere. Hope to see a great crowd. 10, 12,000 hopefully there uh, on Saturday morning, 9 to 12 on game day. For head coach Everett Withers, I'm Kurt Dudley. Thank you for joining us this week on the Coach Everett Withers Show. Office products, we buy right so you can do. That's right. At Office Products, we do things right. With our multi-million dollar inventory of new, used, and refurbished furniture, you're sure to find exactly what you're looking for. From desks to chairs, filing cabinets, and so much more. All the major brands that you're looking for. Office Products, we buy right so you can too. Office Products, we do things right.